This is one of design results. Design result. If you see here, uh, calculate D in this case, calculate D in this case using, as I explained, a input. Input. So this is a step one calculation. Step one, you calculate reverse outputs. The outputs that were moved to outputs, which are supposed to be placed in input, because you want to pre-assign some of the parameters in reverse way. Do you follow me? This is something that I say as a reverse input parameters, right? So they, you have to move some of the output that's supposed to be an input to outputs, right? So that we call that kind of output as reverse output, okay? And D is one of the reverse outputs here. If you see over there. And we use a um, 100,000 big data. We generate 100,000 big data from the software based on based on ACI 318 14 I'll, I'll get I'll get there soon and here we use a five layers and we say 40 neurons incredible we have a 40 neurons 40 neurons means we have a 40 circles vertically to try to form a artificial neural networks and also we set a 50,000 epoch that means that I want to go 50,000 epoch epoch because I don't know how many epoch I'm gonna need to get a to get a correct weights and weights and biases and the neural networks found that the best epoch for training which means that the, the best epoch gave you the correct bias and correct weights. So this is now 15,095 and, and you're stopping a 15,595. The reason you go a little longer is that even though you got a best epoch right there and the training continues to see if you can go and get better better training result than this here but um at fifteen thousand five hundred five hundred ninety five epoch you will stop will stop because there is uh, enough evidences that you cannot improve your training accuracies anymore so that your neural networks stops right there at 15,595 and this is a very lengthy process and we have a uh, mean scared errors and and this is also test scared errors and networks I mean see the on test data are not seen by the artificial neural networks and also come up with pretty small mean square errors and the all value the regression value is come out to be 0.988 which is very good so this is how you interpret the the accuracies and the design training results training edge is incredible the training edge you need to go all the way to 43,994 epoch for best one best training results and it stopped at 44,994 epochs whereas you are requesting 50,000 epoch for entire training processes and this is probably because you are having a very complicated relationships of edge among all big data sets and this is even more incredible here if you train row rt your 
epoch that you request in the beginning is not enough because you went to all the way to 50,000 and 50,000 so that we're not sure whether we have achieved the best trending results for royalty with the required epoch of 50,000 so that it is always good to see your best epoch and uh, stopping epoch before the required epoch. If you training royalty even more dramatic because you went to all the way to 50,000 for a past epoch and stopped epoch is also 50,000 whereas your required epoch is 50,000 as well. In that case, we're not sure whether we have achieved the best epoch because you cannot go beyond the 50,000 because 50,000 is limited by the by the system so that in this case in this case you want to go more than 50,000 to verify that you having a best epoch always but in this case we didn't do that because the um, training uh, mean mean squared errors and test mean squared errors are small enough to get a design good designs because this is minus six minus six whereas you have a minus five minus five so this is very nice very good uh, training results compared to this one where you're training our pledge however you have reached 19,237 epoch when you are training royal c and also you stopped at 19,737 whereas you are requesting 50,000 epoch to train row RC so that you have achieved enough train accuracies because your epoch stops well before 50,000 which are requested by the systems and this is very nice to see these values these epochs which are less than the one that you requesting the training process to continue and terminates. The, one of the important thing here is the sequence of your training outputs. Here we train D and H and Roar T and Roar C right here. Okay, now the sequence of training outputs is very important in these trainings like you see over here when you train D first the D is used here to train H and after you train H D and H used here to train Royal T and after you train Royal T all these three parameters also are used as a input parameters to train Royal C Royal C so the, the the reason this is possible is that when you train when you train D you have a all the output parameter together. For example, in, when you train D, you have also H, row R T, row R C in output parameter at the same time. So that when you train D, you cannot use these parameters as input parameters to train D, D, because all the parameters are right now placed in output side simultaneously. But after you train D. D is released from output parameters. So D can be placed in input side to train H. And train after you train H, D and H can be placed in input side for training row T and so on and so forth. So that it is good when you have a very complex relationship among big data sets for row RC because you can use all input parameters as many as 12. Now you are able to include all the pre-trained parameters in input side to train row RC. You think row RC is very complex relationship among big data sets. So this is very good way to train your parameter in sequence so that you can have a better training results so you can put the most complex training parameters at the end while having all the training 
parameters on an input side. And we define this sequence as TS1 sequence. Next one, we will take a look at TS2 sequence where we're going to go train row RC first, row RT, NH, and D, and try to compare both training result and design results based on these two different sequences. Which one is better for design of this type of uh, reinforced concrete beams? And we're going to start with a row RC. And we have to have only nine because we are having all the other parameters as a output parameters with the row RC. And after you training row RC, you can put them in the in the input side, input side here to train row RT. After you train row RT, you can put row RC, row RT both in input side to train H, and then you go put everything here make a 12 input parameters to train output D. And, and this is one way you can train all this reverse output. Reverse output. Okay, we are now training reverse output. Output. And also the epochs are very small when you have best epoch at 9 9519 only 10,000 while you are requesting the trend to go 50,000 here less than 50,000 which is fine to me and this is not the last this is some kind of um, a biggest situation where we now really sure you know really sure whether you have a enough train training accuracy were achieved or not with with the output H because the training epoch, stopping epoch, best epoch are the same as the training, the, the required epoch, which is 50,000. And here, same here, same here. Okay, but we we do not we did not extend 50,000. 50,000. We thought that the training accuracies that we have achieved were sufficient enough so we we didn't extend it but you you better you better have the established or required required epochs always greater than the one that you have best epoch here and here and here here so this is very important to understand okay now in next clip we're going to compare the design Accuracies, design accuracies between TS1 and TS2. And this gives you an idea when you have a less design accuracies that you want, then you can change the training sequence as you see over here to try to enhance your training accuracies leading to design accuracies, the better design accuracies.